Hello, welcome to Monday's Look East. Coming up in the programme, more than 100 families forced to leave their homes to make way for the homeless. It's happened in Peterborough and in Luton. Do you think it's acceptable to evict people in order to provide accommodation for the homeless? Tonight, we track down the company profiting from this housing crisis. First tonight, the company which has forced more than 100 families to leave their homes so they can be used as temporary accommodation for homeless people. Steph and Phillips buy the properties, then rent them to councils at higher prices. We've previously reported they were doing this at St Michael Gate in Peterborough. Tonight, the BBC can reveal they've done the same thing in Luton. Except in Luton, the council refused to pay the increased rent. Neighbourhood spirit in action. Thank you, dear, for getting my bits. Yelena Stevich finds shopping difficult, so sometimes her neighbours pop to the supermarket for her. But soon she faces losing those neighbours. Along with every family on St Michael's Gate in Peterborough, she is facing eviction. Her house and the whole street will be used to accommodate homeless people. It's going to completely change our lives, this that's happening to us all. Um, you know, like I said, we get up and, and we live our lives, and but now it's like we're not sure what the future holds for us or where it's going to be. The landlord at St Michael's Gate is North London property developer Steph and Phillips. We wanted to put some questions to their director, Christakis Philippou. I uh, just wonder if we could talk to you about what's happening at St Michael's Gate. No comment. Uh, why are you treating the people at St Michael's Gate in the way you are? Do you think it's acceptable to evict people in order to provide accommodation for the homeless? So although they didn't want to speak on camera, I've just been invited in for a chat. And the company were keen to point out that although they are a private business, this isn't all about money. Actually, they say that they work very hard to help the people who live in their accommodation. They also point out that at St Michael's Gate in Peterborough, the 74 homes that are there will be used to provide high quality accommodation to people who are currently homeless and living in very difficult circumstances. But we can reveal that Peterborough isn't the first place Stephen Phillips have forced people out of their homes to make way for homeless accommodation. This is Milliner's Court in Luton, a group of more than 90 flats which was bought back in 2014 for four and a quarter million pounds. The buyer, a company with links to the one which now owns St Michael's Gate, the agent which is acting as the landlord, the same one which is evicting those families in Peterborough. Stephen Phillips wanted to increase the rent on those flats by thousands of pounds a year. The landlord was going to put the rents up to what we believe was unreasonable levels. Uh, when they wouldn't listen or negotiate with us, we just moved our tenants out. Peterborough's MP is now calling for a change in the law. I will be lobbying ministers very hard to make sure that we close these loopholes. And it's, I think, incumbent upon London boroughs not to be offloading and dumping homeless people all over the eastern region. They must take responsibility for their own uh, obligations under homeless legislation. Back in Peterborough, Yelena Stevich has helped gather hundreds of signatures for a petition. But as the first eviction notices are being issued, it seems unlikely that the families on St Michael's Gate will get to stay. Well, Tom's uh, with me now. Tom, have we heard any more from Stephen Phillips today? Yeah, Claire, just a few hours after I visited them, them this morning, Steph and Phillips published a long statement. First of all, they say they regret any distress being experienced by the current tenants at St Michael's Gate. They also point out that they are lawfully seeking possession within the terms of existing tenancy agreements. And they say that they have given more than 10 tenants extra time to find new accommodation. They add, we are working closely with Peterborough City Council to ensure the properties become a valued part of the council's temporary accommodation portfolio, providing an excellent opportunity for them to reduce the use of unsuitable accommodation elsewhere and to provide cost-effective temporary accommodation of a good standard from a specialist provider. This is the first we've heard from Stephen Phillips. I suspect, though, it won't be the last we hear on this story. Indeed. For now, though, Tom, thanks very much.